Hello everyone, this is Glenn Elliott, and in the last tutorial we covered the four basic edits, the append edit, overwrite edit, insert edit, and connect edit. Today we're going to be diving a little bit deeper and go over some more advanced editing techniques. We'll be covering how to back time your edits, replace edits on auditioning, top and tail editing, extend edits, trim to selection edits, keyboard trimming, and the precision editor. So let's get started. All right, so first up is back timing your edit. I'm just going to go ahead and slug a bunch of clips down to the timeline just to populate it right now. Now there's two tools that will allow you to back time your edit. It's the Q for connect edit and D for overwrite edit. Now normally whenever you do either of those edits, it's going to drop your selection down and start the first frame of your selection wherever your timeline cursor is. For example, if I make a small selection in this clip here and I go ahead and hit the Q key, it's going to drop the very first frame of this selection and start it where the timeline cursor is. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Q. So it went and connected right where the timeline cursor was. Now conversely, we can see the reverse of that and back timing by holding down the shift key. So I'm doing the same exact edit, the connect edit, but using the shift modifier key. So now I'm going to hit shift Q. And as you see, it back timed it. What it did is it dropped that same selection down, but it ended it where the timeline cursor is. There are several times in editing we're going to find you're going to need to back time your edits and it's a lot easier than to drop it down and move it. You can go ahead and just hit the shift key and it'll end up exactly where you need it. Another way to illustrate this is with the overwrite edit. I'm going to go ahead and move my timeline cursor in between these two clips. I made a small selection up here. I'm just going to hit the letter D on my keyboard and create an overwrite edit which is going to take this selection and drop it right on top of this clip starting from here to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit D now. So I just made an overwrite edit, started from the edit point and moved it over. I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to do the exact opposite of that and back time the edit. So I'm going to hit shift D instead of just D. You see it back timed it. So it, it inserted it and ended where the timeline cursor is. So next up is the replace edit and auditioning. Several times in editing, you're going to find a shot that you don't want and you want to replace it with something else. Of course, you can simply highlight it, delete it find your replacement shot and insert it. However, you could do the same thing with a single step. So we're just going to undo that. So say we're editing here and we, there's a shot of a wheel and we don't want this anymore. We want to replace it with a shot of a car interior. So we can grab that shot, drag it down, and as soon as it overlaps the shot, you see it becomes like a lighter shade. That's when you know you're in the right position. You'll also see a green um, button with uh, a, a plus sign. That's when you know you're in the right spot. So we're going to go ahead and let go of the mouse button here. You're going to be greeted by a dialog box with several choices. First, we're going to do the first option, which is the replace edit. So that's a simple replace. It's going to be, it's not going to regard for length. So if the shot that you're bringing in is longer, it's going to make your timeline longer. If your shot is shorter, it's going to make your timeline shorter. In this case, our selection was longer, so it's actually going to make the timeline longer when it replaces. So we're going to go ahead and replace it now. So it pushed it down. Now there's going to be instances where you're timed perfectly, you're lined up, you don't want to throw off the timing of your edit, but you still want to replace the shot. You don't have to worry about making an exact selection to the exact length or less to make sure it doesn't throw off your timing. You can go ahead and make your selection, drag it down, and we already know this is longer just by looking at it, but we're going to overlap it. But now we want to replace it, but we do not want to make this clip longer. So we either choose one of the of the two next selections. That's replace from start and replace from end. And that's very similar to a normal edit and a, and a back timed edit. So replace from start is going to bring that new clip in and it's going to start the first frame of that new clip on the first frame of the, of the clip that's replacing. Replace from end on the other hand is going to um, basically back time the replacement, meaning it's going to take the clip that you selected and have the last frame of that clip end on the last frame of the clip that you're replacing and just trim the rest. So we're going to replace from start. So it replaces the clip and it's longer, but it's just cutting it off. And, and likewise, if we replace from end, it's doing the same thing, but it's trimming off the front of the clip. So the replace edit is actually a very effective edit. There's times where, you know, I'll see a shot, I know I don't want it. So rather than deleting and throwing off my timing, I can simply just do a shift delete and which will leave a gap clip behind. So everything is still timed and I know by looking at the gap clip, I need to go back later and fill that in. I can always grab a shot, drag it in and do a replace edit and just making sure I replace from end or start to make sure it doesn't throw off my timing. 
there's going to be times in editing where you're going to want to experiment with various shots. I know there's several instances where I'm kind of mulling over various options of a particular shot. For example, this shot of a black car. I shot it from multiple different angles. Um, I just want to put one shot of it in there, but I'm not sure which shot will work best with the edit. So I can go ahead and uh, you know click all the different angles that I, I shot of the car and drag them down over top of each other. That way I can just visually see them all and, and just kind of experiment with them. I can you know, move my cursor and I can highlight them, hit the V key for visibility on and off and just kind of experiment, see what looks good. And once I you know, have my pick, I can you know, delete the rest and, and then drag it in. But there's a much better way of doing this. Apple introduced a new feature called auditioning, which is a slick way of experimenting with shot or shots or auditioning shots. And it started the same way you start a replace edit. So say we have our clip here, we want to create an audition. So we can grab the other angles that we shot of this car and drag them down right over top of the clip like we're replacing it, let go. But now we're going to choose replace and add to audition. So it does, it replaces that shot but also there's a little spotlight icon that, that shows up and that denotes that there's an audition. If you click that spotlight icon, it'll open up your audition and you can see the two shots, two options. So you can go back and forth and watch your edit and try these two different shots and you can continually add various shots to the audition. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this shot of this angle. We're gonna add this to it. Now this time we're gonna to choose to add to audition. What that's gonna do is not gonna replace the current pick, it's just gonna add it to the audition but keep the current shot selected. So you see nothing changes, but when you go in there, the shot has been added to the audition right here. So I think that's a really slick feature. Um, I haven't used it a whole lot um, thus far. I can see it being a very useful feature. One of the tasks you'll find yourself performing all the time when editing is the process of going through your timeline and just tweaking edit points and trimming them in and out and dragging them around. So say we have a shot here and there's a couple takes on this movement here. So I want to start it from here. I'll click. I'll move my cursor, grab the edit point and ripple it in. Then we'll scrub over. We'll find out where we want to end the shot. So we find it right about there is a good end and we'll just ripple this back in. Now there's some keyboard shortcuts to what's called a top and tail edit. It's really slick. I'm going to undo here. So if we're moving our cursor here and we know that we want to start our shot, say, here, instead of clicking and coming down and grabbing and rippling, we can do something in like a quick keyboard shortcut. It just makes it really fast. So we'll find our, our start point for this edit. And on the keyboard, to trim the in point of the clip to where the cursor is, we're going to hold down the Option key and hit the left bracket. So as soon as I hit that, you're going to see the in point move to where my cursor is with one click. We'll go ahead and scrub a little bit further down the clip, find the end shot right about here, and now hold down the Option key and hit the right bracket, which is the out point of the clip. So with just two keyboard shortcuts, you can, you can see how quick this can be going through the timeline, finding the, the beginning of a shot and end of a shot. So say we want to start it here, and we want that shot to end right there. And with this shot here, we want to start it where it's up here, and scrub over, and the shot ends right there. So just with the, with the keyboard holding down the option, left bracket, option right bracket, it'll trim the in or out point to where the timeline cursor is very fast. Again, it's called the top and tail edit. There's another edit available that's pretty similar. It's called the extend edit. What the extend edit does is allows you to move any edit point to the location of the timeline cursor. So say we, if we choose the in point of this clip here, we move the cursor to the right, we hit shift X to perform an extend edit. You're gonna see that in point ripple to the location of the timeline cursor, shift X. Likewise, if we move the cursor to the left of the edit point, hit shift X, it's gonna move it, ripple it out. Um, it also will work with um, rolls as well. So if we hit the trim tool, highlight both the in and the out point move our cursor down, hit shift X, it's just gonna go ahead and roll the edit point to the timeline cursor location. Likewise, with the position tool, if we highlight an edit point with the position tool, move our cursor inward, hit shift X, it's gonna ripple it in, but it's gonna move it just like you would if you had the position tool highlight it and leave a gap behind. So as you saw earlier with the top and tail edit, you can actually trim the in point or the out point to the timeline cursor location. There's another edit called the trim to selection. That, what that does is allows you to trim both the in and the out point with one keyboard shortcut. It's really slick, it's very fast, and I'm going to show you that ex example right now. So we're going to zoom into the timeline and uh, focus on this one clip here. We're just going to skim the clip here and find the in point. 
So it gets a little shaky here. It smooths out right about there. So we're going to hit I on the keyboard to select the endpoint. We're going to skim a little bit forward and find the out point. Right about there is fine. Hit O. So we just hit I and O to make a selection in the clip. Now once you have your in and out point selected, and this is where you want your clip, in the, the, the portions on the outside of the selection you don't want, you hold down the Option key and hit the Backslash key. So it's Option Backslash for a Trim to selection. I'm going to do that now. So with one keyboard shortcut, I trimmed both the in and the out. I got rid of all the, the portion of the clip that I don't want. So it's a really quick um, shortcut to, to do both functions of the top and tail edit. I'm going to do this again with another clip here. We're just going to um, focus on this clip right here. We're just going to scrub and find out where we want to start it. Okay, so we'll start right here at the I key. Skim forward. Find the end. Hit the OK. Now it's Option Backslash. So you see how fast that can be. We'll do it one more time using a different method. We're going to now use the Range Select tool. It's R on your keyboard. And what the Range Selection tool allows you to do is click and drag a selection rather than hitting I and O to select the in and out points. Very similar to how you click and drag selections in your event library. So we're going to do that now with this clip. We're going to find what portion of this clip we want to use. We'll zoom out a little bit. So right about there, I'm just going to click and start dragging. So, oop, got a little shaky there. And right there, there's our clip. So we just hit Option, Backslash. Again, that's the Trim to Selection. There's even a way to trim your timeline up without even touching your mouse. If you press the up and down arrow keys, that'll take you from the previous to the next edit point. The up arrow key will take you to the previous edit point, And the down arrow key will take you to the next edit point. Now once you're on an edit point, you can press the left or right bracket key that choose the in or out point. It's easy to remember because it actually looks like a bracket key hi highlighting. Um, now if you choose, say, the in point of the clip here, if you look down at your keyboard, there's a comma and a period key. They're next to each other. If you press the period, it's going to ripple it in to the right one frame at a time. Press the comma key, it's going to ripple it outward or to the left with every keyboard. Press. Now if you use the shift modifier key and tap it, it's going to move that edit point 10 frames instead of 1 frame. So each time it's a much bigger bigger move here. And likewise I can go ahead and hit the left bracket key and it'll select the out point of that the previous clip and I can trim that the same way with the modifier keys. Now I can also do a roll edit. If you look at your bracket keys, left, right, left and right bracket keys, to the right of that there's a backslash key. If you hit the backslash key, it'll select both sides of the edit and once you use the, the comma and period keys, it's actually going to do a roll edit back and forth. So it's a pretty quick and intuitive way to snap around your, your timeline and make um, trims as necessary. Now um, I'm hitting the left bracket key here and you're seeing the bracket, it's actually red. That's just denoting that there's no more available footage on this particular clip. So this is the very last frame of that clip. So if you try to say uh, ripple it to the right, it won't let you because there's no available media. But of course you could ripple it inwards to the left. Finally, there's the precision editor. As you know, you can use the trim tool, highlight an edit point and roll it back and forth, or use the selection tool and ripple an edit point back and forth. But there's also another way. This thing is really cool. If you double click an edit point, you'll open up the precision editor. And what you're gonna see is it splits in half and it allows you to see the handles of the clip or the unused portions of each clip in the dark gray area, which is really cool because you can scroll through here and see what you have without actually rippling it out and using it. So you can go ahead and move your cursor to where you feel that the clip should have ended and just click and it'll ripple the, um, the clip to that point. You can also uh, conversely grab the edge and ripple back and forth for each portion. Um, this method is really cool because um, it allows you to see, again, all of the available media are the handles. You can grab the gray area in the center to do a roll edit. And once you're done with the edit, you can either double click or hit escape to exit out of the uh, precision editor. Or you can stay in it and actually go through your edit and to fine tune it this way by hitting up and down on the arrow keys to go from edit point to edit point. So it's a, just a really cool visual way to uh, to tune up your edit. So that's pretty much all I have for now. That's some more advanced editing techniques inside the timeline. So I suggest taking the time to experiment with several of these tools and find which ones work for you and your workflow and just help your, you know, speed up your editing. Thanks again and I'll see you guys soon.